Hi everybody, this is the um, community reading of the New South Wales Plastics Plan, Cleaning Up Our Act, Redirecting the Future of Plastic in New South Wales, a discussion paper uh, put out by the New South Wales Government in March this year and submissions are due by 5pm on the 8th of May, Friday the 8th of May. We hope that listening to this plan uh, will help you get enthused to write lots of awesome submissions to the New South Wales Government. And now Jeff Angel is going to read the Minister's message. Hello, I'm trying to pretend to be the New South Wales Minister for Environment, Matt Keane. And this is what he says. Plastic has vastly improved the quality of our lives and allowed us to pursue unparalleled advances in technology, transport, communication, healthcare, safety, and education. However, plastic has also become synonymous with the global consumer economy that underpins our use and dispose mentality. So much so that plastic is piling up in our natural environment and poses a risk to human health. The plastic that is littered today will still exist in hundreds or even thousands of years time, possibly longer. Even when plastic does break down, it doesn't go away. It often becomes microplastics or nanoplastics, which can absorb dangerous chemicals. The plastic itself and the chemicals attached can be breathed in absorbed through the skin or ingested. If we don't improve how we manage plastic now, plastic pollution will only increase, causing more damage to our environment and increasing the risk to human health now and for generations to come. We are facing a global plastic pollution crisis that requires a comprehensive and bold response. This is not just about banning one product. This is about changing how our economy uses, reuses, and disposes of plastic. Reducing plastic waste and protecting our environment and the health and well-being of our communities are key priorities for the New South Wales government. We have a great track record when it comes to protecting our environment and reducing litter. Cleaning up our act, will build on this strong legacy. The success of the New South Wales Container Deposit Scheme, Return and Earn, which has seen more than 3 billion containers returned, demonstrates that industry in our community is ready and willing to work with government to improve resource management practices and reduce litter. Community sentiment and preferences regarding the use of plastic is starting to change. And we need to work together with households to put more pressure on industry to change the way plastic is generated and managed. We need to reduce the amount of plastic leaking into the environment and improve recycling outcomes for plastics, including building capacity for industry to develop a demand for end products that encourage innovation and create jobs. Cleaning Up Our Act offers a comprehensive series of actions for managing plastics that can firmly place New South Wales alongside international jurisdictions and help to realise my vision, and I might say my vision, Jeff's too, of New South Wales leading the nation when it comes to tackling the challenge of plastic waste. Once completed, cleaning up our act will sit alongside the 20 year waste strategy with a focus that is centered on sustainability. Plastic is valued and managed in New South Wales within a circular economy, delivering improved environmental and human health outcomes. Reliability. Plastic is manufactured, reused, recycled and disposed with minimal disruptions in services and in accordance with community expectations. For example, there are resilient local and international markets for recovered plastics. Affordability. 
Plastic usage and management improvements are undertaken with the least adverse impacts on consumers, including costs, and plastic reuse and recycling initiatives realise the economic opportunities available. I now want to hear your views on the outcomes and priority directions we have laid out in this discussion paper. Together, we can change the way we manage plastic in New South Wales to help protect our environment and the health of communities for generations to come. Matt Keane, Minister for Environment and Energy. Thanks, Jeff. On uh, the table of contents in the discussion paper includes the <coughs> executive summary, the case for action, you developing a com comprehensive plan to address plastics, and four outcomes being outcome one, reduce plastic waste generation. Outcome two, make the most of our plastic resources. Outcome three, reduce plastic waste leakage. Outcome four, improve our understanding of the future of plastics. And finally, next steps. We acknowledge uh, the Aboriginal people, the traditional owners of country in New South Wales and pay our respect to their elders past, present and emerging. We recognise that the state's waste and resource recovery facilities are built on land that has been managed by Aboriginal people for millennia. Now we get to the executive summary. The New South Wales Plastics Plan, the first steps. Um, cleaning up our act is the first step in developing a new comprehensive approach to managing plastic waste and pollution in New South Wales. The overarching objective of this approach is to protect our environment for human health from the impact of plastics while minimising the impacts on consumers and by maximising the economic opportunities that are available. The New South Wales government wants to develop a whole of lifestyle a life cycle plan, i.e. from production through to disposal and management of waste for plastics in our state, that not only looks to adopt international best practice, but lays out an ambition to lead the way on new approaches. The proposed actions will allow New South Wales to become a world leader in managing plastics, where we have eliminated harmful plastics, cleaned up plastic pollution, and used our knowledge to get the most value out of our plastic resources. There then follows a figure, figure one, showing the stages of the plastic life cycle, which they describe as generation and use, going to collection and processing, going to end of life, going to its future state. And then this discussion paper sets out four key outcomes for each stage of the life cycle of plastic, each of which is supported by a proposed target and priority directions. Outcome one is to reduce plastic waste generation. The proposed target is to phase out single use plastics. The priority direction, one, harness people to create a fundamental shift in the way we use plastic. Priority direction two, set design standards for plastic consumer items. And priority direction three is to phase out key single use plastic items. Outcome number two is to make the most of our plastic resources. And the proposed target is to triple the proportion of plastic recycled in New South Wales across all sectors and streams by 2030. So priority direction four is make producers of plastic items more responsible for collecting and recycling in New South Wales. Priority direction five is mandate 30% minimum recycled content in plastic packaging in New South Wales by 2025. And priority direction six is support demand and industry capacity.
Outcome three, reduce plastic waste leakage. The proposed target, reduce plastic litter items by 25% by 2025. The priority direction seven, use extended producer responsibility schemes to fund litter collection and end of life plastic management. Priority direction eight, invest in infrastructure that can better manage plastic before it causes harm. Outcome four is to improve our understanding of the future of plastics. The proposed target is make New South Wales a leader in national and international research on plastics. Priority direction nine, set up a New South Wales plastics research network by 2021. Priority direction 10, support commercialization of research driven plastic solutions. The New South Wales Government will work with key stakeholders and the community to develop and undertake actions under each priority direction. Some actions will be targeted towards specific plastics known to be of concern, while other actions will target a wider range of plastics or address system-wide issues in the plastic management process. Some of these interventions mirror what is happening in other states and territories. Some need new regulatory action, while others need close partnerships with communities, researchers and industry. We also recognise that certain plastic items may perform critical functions for some members of the community. These and other social considerations will be explicitly addressed in carrying out the New South Wales plan. Have your say. That's the whole point of this discussion paper. <clears throat> Government, industry and community all need to work together to clean up our state. Now is your chance to help set the direction for how New South Wales deals with plastic. Let the New South Wales Government know your thoughts through the online surveys found at the website your say dot dpie dot nsw dot gov dot au forward slash plastics hyphen plan. You can also provide a written submission by emailing plastics dot plan at environment dot nsw dot gov dot au. And the deadline is 5 p.m. on the 8th of May this year. Your feedback from this consultation process will be used to develop the final New South Wales Plastics Plan. The New South Wales Government are asking for your thoughts on each of the proposed outcomes, targets and priority directions. We all have a part to play. Managing plastic waste is everybody's responsibility between governments, industry and the community. Commonwealth, state, territory and local governments work together, set and enforce legislation and policy in a consistent manner that is fair and equitable. Governments also provide critical infrastructure, gather data and have an important role in funding priority research and innovation. Industry includes all those organisations from the producers of plastics through to the disposers of plastic waste. Many socially and environmentally conscious organisations are already carrying out or are currently looking into actions to better manage plastic waste. Cleaning up our act will further support these industry-led initiatives. The community and non-government organisations are key players in keeping our New South Wales environment free from plastic waste. I think I would say fundamental in keeping our New South Wales environment free from public plastic waste. Through Cleaning Up Our Act, the New South Wales community will be supported to become leaders in the sustainable use of plastic, particularly in reducing our over-reliance on single-use, unnecessary and problematic plastics. This discussion paper sets out priority directions for how we can bring about change and work in partnerships with all stakeholders to take action.
Managing plastic waste is everybody's responsibility. We can bring about change by working together. The case for action. Why we need to act now without fast and effective action to improve our use and management of plastics, their negative impacts will rapidly increase. Plastic is an intergenerational problem. And plastic lasts hundreds or if not thousands of years. And even when it does break down, it becomes microplastics, small plastic fragments, fibers or beads, less than five millimeters, or nanoplastics, tiny pieces of plastic that, that can move across cell membranes. And these plastics can contaminate our soil, air, water, our ecosystems, and the human food chain. Microplastics have been found in the Arctic sea ice, in remote lakes, and at the bottom of the ocean. And it's in our drinking water. While we still don't understand the full impact of plastic on human health, we do know that plastic particles can absorb and transport toxic chemicals. And we also know that toxic chemical additives can leach out of plastic particles into the surrounding environment. These processes are shown in figure two. So in figure two, you can see that the chemical interactions with plastic in the environment, particle matrix contains additives, particle floats near organic contaminants, contaminants sorb to particle, and the additives leach into water. So the leaching, and absorption. Plastic, more than any other material type, ends up in our environment through leakage or littering or in, land, in our landfills. Um, on average, only 10% of the plastic we consume in New South Wales each year is recycled. Of the amount recycled, approximately 70% is sent offshore for recycling, with only 30% actually recycled in Australia. On Friday, the 9th of August 2019, the Council of Australian Governments tasked environment ministers to develop a timetable for setting up a ban on the export of waste plastic, paper, glass and tyres. On the 8th of December 2019, environment ministers agreed to draft a timetable for the ban of mixed plastic exports from 1st of July 2021 and other types of waste plastics no later than the 30th of June 2022. Ministers agreed to further test the draft timetable with industry and local government, while also developing response strategies and undertaking independent market analysis. The New South Wales government must act quickly in coordination with other Australian governments to build the capacity of the local waste management and recycling sector to collect, recycle, reuse, convert and recover plastic waste to deliver against the plastic export ban and improve local, local recycling rates. In New South Wales, there are an estimated 27 plastic items littered per thousand square metres. That's 27 plastic items per thousand square metres. This impacts on the visual immunity, immunity of local communities and drives significant cleanup costs that fall largely on local governments, community groups and private land managers. In 2015, a survey estimated that litter management costs the New South Wales economy more than $167 million each year. Despite the cleanup efforts, a lot of litter is not actually captured and spreads into the environment, where it finds its way into our soils, waterways, estuaries, the ocean and other pristine environments. Globally, a garbage truck a minute worth of plastic waste is flowing into our oceans and humans are estimated to be ingesting a credit card's weight of plastic each week. The harm to our environment and the risks to human health mean that we do need to act now. Plastic is everywhere. Today nearly everyone everywhere, every day comes into contact with plastic. Plastic has been the backbone of our modern global economy. Plastic is low cost and highly functional, moldable, flexible, lightweight, durable, and waterproof. We use plastic in many tasks in our everyday lives. For example, our clothing and shoes often contain plastic, as do the tires in our cars, the sponges we use to clean the dishes, 
the lounge we sit on in the evenings to watch television, the television itself, and many other everyday items. Look around you right now. It's likely you'll see something made from plastic. Over the last 50 years, plastic production has increased exponentially and without a dramatic change, is set to continue that course. Uh, figure three, global plastic consumption. The picture on this page nine in the uh, doc document says in 1960s, we were producing 15 million tonnes of plastic per annum. By 2015, that number had grown to 322 million tonnes per annum. And it's estimated by 2045 that we'll be producing in excess of 600 million tonnes per annum at current rates of increase. Plastic facts. Consumption in Australia and New South Wales. Australia consumes 3.4 million tonnes of plastic every year. 1.2 million tonnes of that is produced locally. Plastic manufacturing employs about 85,000 people in Australia and is 10% of all manufacturing activity. New South Wales consumed 1.1 million tonnes of plastic in 2017-2018 mainly made of packaging and household items, 1.1 million tonnes. The problem with plastic. Plastic can harm our environment. We often use a piece of plastic for mere minutes, but it can remain in our environment for decades, hundreds or even thousands of years. Plastic persists in our environment in a way that paper, metal, glass or wood does not. Plastic waste is now so common in the natural environment that by 2050, it is predicted that there will be more plastic by weight in the ocean than fish. This reference comes from the World Economic Forum 2016. Plastic can cause injury or death to marine animals through suffocation, entanglement and ingestion. Plastic can also concentrate and transport harmful chemicals. For example, plastics adsorb, which means they stick onto the outside rather than absorbing, and concentrate chemicals like pesticides and persistent organic pollutants. Scientists have found plastic pellets with up to one million times more concentrated levels of persistent organic pollutants than the surrounding seawater. These chemicals can interfere with organisms' immune systems, their hormone function, their ability to reproduce, impair their organs, or cause cellular and tissue level disruption. Microplastics are also a problem on land. A recent groundbreaking New South Wales study showed that microplastics can also block soil pores, preventing or limiting plant growth, because air and water can't move properly through the soil. Once in soil, microplastics are impossible to remove. So it is important to protect our soils from microplastic pollution. Plastic facts. Plastic harms our oceans and marine wildlife. Eight million tonnes of plastic leak into our oceans every year equal to a dump truck a minute. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, um, a hot spot of plastic waste in the ocean, otherwise known as the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre, is twice the size of New South Wales, 1.6 metres square kilometres. Uh, sorry, 1.6 million square kilometres. There are up to 236,000 tonnes of microplastics in the ocean. And by 2050, there'll be more plastic by weight in the ocean than fish. 80% of global marine debris is plastic. 75% of all litter along the Australian coastline is plastic. Plastic kills or injures thousands of animals from more than 600 marine species every year. 33% of turtles and 43% of seabirds have eaten plastic. By 2050, 99% of seabirds will have eaten plastic. 
coral can ingest microplastic and may then starve to death as their digestive tracts fill up with plastic. The CSIRO estimated that a small proportion of the discarded or lost fishing nets float in the ocean killed up to 14,600 turtles in one year. An estimated 6.4 million tonnes of fishing gear are lost or discarded in the oceans every year. The United Nations has estimated that the damage to marine environment caused by plastic costs the US 8 billion every year. So the case for action, plastic facts, impacts on climate change. 99% of plastic is made from fossil fuels. That's a huge amount, I would note. Global production and incineration of plastic releases 400 million tonnes of CO2 gas a year. Next heading is plastic can pose a risk to human health. So plastics can pose risks to human health in various ways. People can be exposed to microplastics and nanoplastics and the chemicals they contain by breathing them in, eating or drinking them, or by absorbing them through their skin. Microplastics have been found in table salt, honey, tap and bottled water, in the air we breathe and in seafood. Researchers have found evidence that suggests billions of microplastic particles can be shed from a single tea bag. Researchers have also recently found microplastics in human waste. Researchers do not yet fully understand the human health impact of microplastics. However, research to date has shown that inhaled or ingested microplastics can pass into the bloodstream and remain there for a long time. In animals, microplastics in the bloodstream have been shown to cause inflammation fibrosis, breaks in DNA, cellular and tissue level disruptions, which can cause cancer. Chemical additives in microplastics, such as phthalates, uh, perfluorooctanic and perfluorooctane sulfonic acids, and biphenol A, uh, are also known as BPA, or chemicals absorbed by microplastics in the environment such as pesticides or persistent organic pollutants, known as POPs, can have significant negative impacts on human health. These chemicals can impair reductive, reproductive health and thyroid function, implant neurodevelopment, disrupt the endocrine system, and may be carcinogenic or impair health in other ways. Researchers are still trying to figure out the level, level of exposure of risk to humans. Research on the human health impacts of, of nanoplastics is still in its early stages. We currently don't know the quantity of nanoplastics in our environment or how they interact with the environment or people. However, nanoplastics are considered a risk to human health because they can move across cell membranes with as yet unknown consequences. Plastic facts. Risks to human health. A University of Newcastle study estimated we ingest 250 grams of microplastics a year. That's equivalent to a credit card's weight in plastic every week. Up to 90% of microplastic particles can persist in treated biosolid sludge, which is often applied as fertilizers on soil. Recent research estimates microplastic concentration in soils and in freshwater ecosystems is between four and 23 times higher than in the oceans. Developing a comprehensive plan to address plastics, the final section. This discussion paper is the first step towards developing comprehensive policies to make New South Wales a leader in the way we manage plastic. We must fundamentally change the way we manage plastic at every stage of its life cycle to make sure we protect the environment and community from any potential harm. 
This discussion paper sets out broad outcomes we want to achieve at the point of generation of plastic, collection, reprocessing and end of life. It also sets out broad outcomes for how we want to influence the future state of plastic, including managing new technologies and new innovations that might also bring with them new risks to the environment and human health. This discussion paper also highlights potential priority directions for the New South Wales Government to follow to achieve these outcomes. Some of these involve us aligning with international best practices, while some would see New South Wales taking bold new steps and leading the way. For each outcome, the discussion paper proposes setting targets to help us measure our progress. We hope you'll tune in to see, uh, to listen or see the next reading of the plastic plan, New South Wales plastic plan. We will be posting it up each uh, day over four days at the same time on the Boomerang Alliance Facebook page and also be available on the Boomerang Alliance website and check out lots of our allies Facebook pages too. We'll be sharing it and we hope that will inspire you to make uh, submissions to the New South Wales Government.